today's lesson, we're going to look at something that is called a circle graph. Before we actually look at the graphs, we've got to go over some vocabulary first. Now, in order to use circle graphs, we have to know what angles are and how to measure angles. And what we have here is an angle, and an angle is made up of three different things. We have two rays, and those are the blue lines that we see going out, one this way and one going up. And then this red dot is where both of our rays start from. And what this red dot is called is the vertex. So now we're going to use this tool. It's called a protractor. And we can use a protractor to both measure angles and draw them as well. Now since this is a little bit bigger angle, I'm going to use a bigger protractor. Now the way I use my protractor is, in the center I have a zero point. And that's where I'm going to want to line up my vertex. I want to line it up with the center point. And since this ray was going out to the right, I'm going to use the inside scale that starts here with a zero. And I'm going to follow it up to where my line is. Following it up to right about here, where it says the number 70 on the inside. My inside number is 70. Now what this means is, this angle has a measurement of 70. And just like with temperature, we use degrees. So the measurement of this angle is 70 degrees. And I was able to find that by using the center point on my protractor, lining it up with the vertex. And since my ray was going out to the right, I start with the zero that's on the inside, follow it up, and takes me right about to the 70. And now I found out that the angle, or the measurement of this angle, is 70 degrees. Now we're going to get into a few steps that will give us more information about circle graphs. Well, in order to have a circle graph, we have to have a circle. And the data in a circle graph is going to be displayed in something that looks like a pizza or pie slices. And most of us have seen this before. Now we just went over the measurement of angles. The well, circle is an angle in a way too, and it also has a measurement. And we know that all circles are equal to having the measurement of 300 in 60 degrees. Now that's something we definitely want to remember, something we probably want to put in our notes, that all circles have a measurement of 360 degrees. Now let's say we had something that was close to a perfect circle. This isn't really perfect, but it's pretty close. And if I were to take a protractor and go right down the middle of it, I would see that if this was my starting point on the inside, zero, if I curve all the way around halfway, through the circle, it ends up being 180 degrees. Now if we flipped it and did the other side, start with this zero again, coming around, it would be back to 180 degrees. So if my circle is split in half, and this angle is 180, and this angle is 180, well if we add them together, 180 plus 180, we end up getting 360. So that's why a circle has a measurement of 360 degrees. And what we're being asked to do is find the angle measure. So remember, the total measurement of a circle is 360 degrees. So what I want to do now is take all of my percentages, turn them into decimals, multiply them by 360, and that's going to give me the degree of each one of these angles, each one of these pie slices. So let's do that and let's start with the largest one. Let's go with 45. So 45% as a decimal is going to be 0.45. We multiply it by 360 and we get 162. And remember, since it's a measurement, it has to be in degrees. All right, let's go with our 5% now. We know that turns into point. 0, 0.5, multiply it by 360, I end up with an answer of 18, has to be in degrees. So now we would continue doing this for each one of the slices. If we go to the 19, we end up getting an answer of 68.4 degrees. And remember, I found that by turning it into a decimal and then multiplying it by 360. If we go to our 21%, we end up with an answer of 75.6 degrees. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five slices. One, two, three, four, which means we have one more left. We want to do the 10%. We want to multiply 0 0.10 times 360. I end up with an answer of 36. It has to be in degrees. Now, if we wanted to check our work, what we could do is go back and add up all of our degrees here. And if it equals 360, we know that we did our work correctly. So one more time. In order to find the angles of each one of these, to find the measurement of each angle, and we're given a percent, what we do is we take the percent, turn it into a decimal, and multiply it by 360 degrees. Why 360 degrees? Because that is the total measurement of a circle.